Flaheim Tanas, it's Miss Emily, and I want to share Caribou song with you. page and it goes like this joe and cody lived with their mama and their papa and cody's black dog Utsi. they live too far north for most trees most of the year the lakes and islands and rivers and hills were covered in snow there's translations in cree All year long, they followed the caribou with a sled pulled by eight huskies. Mush, Papa would yell, and the dogs would run straight forward. Cha, he would shout, and they would turn right. And when he would yell, you, they'd turn left. Joe played the accordion, the Kitschuin, from morning to night, he played and sang, a teak, a teak, a stum, a stum, yo ha ho ho, caribou, caribou, come, come, yo ha ho ho. And from morning to night, Cody danced. He danced on the rocks, he danced on the ice, he even danced under the Full silver moon. One day at the end of May, the family stopped on an island after lunch of whitefish and bannock. Joe and Cody wandered off and found a meadow surrounded by forest. In the middle stood a great big rock. Cody, said Joe, this is a perfect spot. Let's sing and dance for the caribou. You dance with your arms up like antlers. I'll sing a teak, a teak, and play the kitchen. And before, and before you know it, 10,000 caribou will burst out of the forest. So Cody raised his arms to look like antlers and began to dance. He lifted his left moccasin then his right, then his left, then his left, and then oof, there he was, flat on the tuft of a pillow soft caribou moss, poking through the melting snow. A teak, a teak, a stum, a stum. Joe played the, and sang as Cody got up and danced like a young caribou. They were so busy dancing and sang and playing Kitschuchuin, that they didn't hear the rumbling. Mama and Papa were sitting near the fire drinking tea. Thunder, Mama asked Papa. It may, can't be, said Papa. Not until summer. Then what can it be? But Mama never finished her question. Faster than lightning, a thousand caribou burst from the forest. Two thousand caribou ran between the cooking fire and the boys. Then ten thousand caribou filled the meadow like a lake. Joe stood in the middle of the pl plunging caribou. Through the tangle of their rushing legs and antlers, he could see Cody, small as a doll, sitting on the caribou moss. Joe took one step, then another, as if swimming through the snorting, steaming bodies, until he reached his brother. When he took Cody's hand, they seemed to float right through the herd. The next thing they knew, they were perched on the big rock, Cody and Joe's lap, Kitchuin between them. All they could see were antlers 
and all they could hear were hooves drumming all around them like thunder. A teak, a teak, a stoom, a stoom. Joe sang again, caribou, caribou, come, come. And out of the drumming came the voice of the herd whispering and moaning and wailing as it flowed past the rock. Cody, Joe, it said, come, come. And the boys opened their arms to embrace the spirit. When the river of caribou had become a trickle, the brothers heard another wailing sound. Mama's face was buried in Papa's parka. Woof, woof. Utsi danced around the great big rock. Ho, ho, Papa sang out. But when Mama looked up at Papa's face, she didn't see tears, but a smile as bright as the sun. For there, atop the large rock, sat Joe and Cody, laughing and laughing and laughing. the end. Aki.